In this lesson, we will finish the beginning of the villain's animation. Now, what's great is that we don't have much work to do to finish the beginning of this. It already looks very nice. Let's say we go ahead and get right to work. For one, looking at the feet, as the left foot plants in, you can see we're getting a lot of uh, locking here, which is uh, not good at all. Lead to some IK popping. So to fix this, we can go to a frame just before the pop where we like the position of the leg as it's uh, extended, but where it has a slight bend. So on frame 8, we'll go there and press Shift-W to lock down the position of the leg. Now you'll see when we go to the next frame, because of the interpolation we're using, heading back over to the graph editor and taking a look at these, these keyframes, because of us using plateau, we have this ni nice smooth transition now from 6 to 11. You can see how that helps us to smooth out the animation now between those two poses. So no longer do we have any locking to deal with. Maybe on frame 10, but that's no problem at all. Again, we can just go ahead and take the the leg and just bring that up so the leg appears to be locked, but it has a slight bend. Notice how smooth the leg looks there. All right, great. Now, how about the opposite foot? You can see how it plants too slow. It's going to plant first before the body hits this pose to keep the character balance. So it's just a matter of taking this pose on frame 15 and speeding it up just one frame so that foot plants and then the body leans in. Great. But the rest of its animation looks very nice. Get a, a nice transition here. Beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and continue to move up the body. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sword. You can see how, again, we're running into hyperextension in the arm. So we'll need to fix that. And the way to do that, again, is to make the arm appear to be extended, but to give it a slight bend. So on frame 12, I'm just moving it back a little bit more on the z-axis. And notice that fixes that problem. All right, great. How about the opposite arm? We want to think about follow through. Right now, the left arm comes down the same time the right arm does. So we're going to want to delay the left arm then. Considering the attack especially, of course, the right arm, the sword arm, is going to swing down first. So it's just a matter of taking the keyframe on 15, delaying that one frame. Now, that might lock the arm up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We still get the follow through we want. You can see the right arm comes down first and then the left, but the arm locks up. Oh no, it's impossible to fix. Well, not at all. It's just a matter of bringing the arm up to remove the locking and then tweaking the shoulder, just rotating that forward a bit more. Great. So look at this. We get the follow through we want and no longer do we have any locking in that arm. Great. Beautiful. So we have a nice transition now from her down pose to where she's about to attack. And I'd say things are looking very nice. How about some follow through in her head? Let's go ahead and grab her head control and take a look at this. So she swung down. Of course, naturally, her head would continue to rotate forward. So we can add that as an in-between on about frame 17 where we kind of rotate the head down just a bit more for some follow-through and twist it to the direction of the blue character. We can do the same thing for our neck control, just grabbing that. We can go ahead and offset this by adding that one frame before the head, so we'll just rotate it down just a little bit more on frame 16. Beautiful. And there we have it. Let's see if we can go ahead and tweak anything else before we call this finished. There's always room to, to polish our, our work further. So taking a look at this, I'm looking at the, the, the wrist right now on frame 19. Let's say we delay that just one frame. The rotation of it. 
So to do so, we can move over to our graph editor to select our rotation keys. Grab the keys on 19 and shift them down just one frame, to frame 20. Let's take a look at this. So now we have some better interpolation in the wrist, but to really sell this follow through, we can go to frame 18 and kind of rotate the wrist in. We want something that's visually appealing. That's that looks very really nice. And then maybe on 19, we can kind of rotate the wrist up just slightly. I think it's too far bent in. And there we have it. Some really beautiful follow through in the character's left wrist. And there we have it. We have completed the beginning of our animation in no time at all, which is very exciting stuff. So you can see how fast the smoothing pass is going now. Again, because we put a lot of effort into the blocking pass. Can't emphasize that enough. Great. Well, we are just about done then. In the next lesson, we could start to work on the character's fall. We have a few poses to fix, so let's say we get right to it.